Hello everyone, I am super excited to tell you about the StyleGAN 2 ADA PyTorch implementation that was just released by NVIDIA not that long ago, depending on when I actually release this video. At least as of February 2021, this is very new stuff. Okay, what's really exciting about this new implementation of StyleGAN 2 from NVIDIA is the original StyleGAN 2 and the ADA variant of it used a very old version of TensorFlow. I mean, only a couple of years, but that's eternity in machine learning. That made it very difficult to use if you have the latest CUDA 11 drivers on your system, or if you're running Ampere, you have to be running the latest CUDA 11. I, there are some ways I think I've read about around it, but not the, not the easiest approach in the world. So let's look in this video at how to use StyleGAN 2 ADA for PyTorch. They decided rather than upgrading from the old 1X version, I think 1.14, that they were using for StyleGAN 2, they just went right to PyTorch. This runs on the CUDA 11, and it's a it's a very easy install. This is one of the great advantages of PyTorch. I was really amazed at how easy it was to get this installed. You know, the if you've watched the PyTorch, if you've watched the StyleGAN 2 ADA videos that I put out in the past, I always did this straight through Docker, and typically Docker on Linux because using WSL2 is it's it's great and it's getting there but it's a rabbit hole in terms of having to put non-standard versions of windows on your computer to get nvidia support and it's it's a whole odyssey just getting wsl2 installed itself what i'm going to show you today is using this in windows with no docker no nothing we're just going to create a conda environment and go from there. So let's get to it. Okay, StyleGAN 2 ADA. It was great when ADA was added really just, just a month or two ago. That allowed StyleGAN to work with substantially fewer images, and it was also a great speed up. This new version that is on PyTorch also seems to offer a speed up. And if you're running on Ampere, like the, the 30 90 series or 30XX or a A6000 like I am, that's important because this has been a lengthy discussion going on here in the issues for the original StyleGAN 2ADA, basically figuring out how to get these to work on 30 series, essentially Ampere, the latest version of NVIDIA's GPU technologies. So I was very interested to see this go to CUDA 11 and particularly PyTorch so that I would have some hope of actually getting this to work on Windows without a lot of trouble. So I'm going to show you how I did that and introduce this a bit. So this is StyleGAN 2 ADA and I definitely want to thank the NVIDIA team for giving me access to this particularly Shannon with NVIDIA PR, and then also, and I am going to apologize in advance if I if I pronounce your name incorrectly, but Jana Helston from NVIDIA Research giving me access to this to, to be able to make this video and show you how to work this technology. Let me go ahead and bump the font size up here a bit. So there's an entire paper that describes this. This is not a new paper. StyleGAN 2 ADA came out a couple of months ago. This is just a new reference implementation from NVIDIA that uses PyTorch. Now, if you're a fan of PyTorch, and I am becoming a bigger and bigger fan almost by the month, this is exciting in and of itself. But the performance is typically 5 to 30% faster. 
I will just say that it feels faster to me, although this is not an official benchmark because I just recently upgraded to an A6000, so that alone I'm sure is giving me a speed boost. And the code also, this just feels faster. I might do a more official benchmark on this, at least with the hardware that, that I have access to. Inference is also considerably faster. I've never had much of a gripe with the inference speed on, even back to the first style GAN, it always performed quite, quite well. GPU memory usage, this is important because to do the 1024 by 1024, you need usually need 10 gigabytes plus on your GPU. So if you're if you're using a 3080 or or lower, you're you're going to you might run into some some ceilings there and you might need to decrease your batch size or do something else with this. I thought this was awesome. I have not tested this out. They are compatible with the old pickles created from the old TensorFlow versions. I will be trying that out because I've got a number of pickles that I have trained for various things. And I really like this zip PNG format. You had to use these TF records before for the TensorFlow version of this. And that's just another kind of proprietary format that you have to deal with. Whereas this is using the zip PNG format. We'll see that in a moment. And TF records are no longer supported. Honestly, yay. They need to be converted to the new format. I have never been a big fan of, of TF records. They're very important when you move TensorFlow to TPUs, tensor processing units, but I have not used TPUs a great deal, mainly because you can only use them in Google Cloud. And I'm more interested in things that I can bring in and run on my, my own computers as well. New JSON format for logs is great. And my only minor complaint would be that the command line, it seems like the command line arguments to these utilities changes with each version of TensorFlow. So I, I always have to redo my, my instructions, but that's fine. I, I feel like they do simplify them each time. So it's to a good goal. So let's go ahead and talk about how we would get this installed and actually running. We'll take it through some training, we'll take it through some inference, and I'll show you all of this. So the requirements. Linux and Windows are both supported. And I will tell you, a lot of these, a lot of these research projects, they run it in Linux only. And I get it. Linux is like easy mode for getting some of these machine learning libraries working, but I realize a lot of you run Windows and want to know how this to do this in Windows. I have a dual boot machine here for my YouTube workstation. I realize it's a bit high end compared to what some of you might be running. So I want to demonstrate this one in Windows. You can see I am running the Windows operating system. They recommend one to, this is insane, but they're, they're quite right. They recommend one to eight high end NVIDIA GPUs with at least 12 gigabytes of memory. Okay, I have one very high-end NVIDIA GPU. I have an A6000, but training on StyleGAN is brutal, it's just brutal. If you, and they show some of the training numbers below there, they, they threw a lot of compute power, the NVIDIA researchers, at training things like the StyleGAN faces and other things that you've seen. You need 64-bit Python 3.7, we'll use all of that. PyTorch 171, that is the latest, so that is great. CUDA Toolkit 11.0 or later. I mean, honestly, keeping CUDA Toolkit separate outside of Docker images, anytime I see something lower than 11.0, I, I kind of want to cry because I know it's going to be a complex configuration challenge or I'll just put it in Docker. And Docker with NVIDIA, I, they've made a lot of improvements with WSL2, but they're, they're not, it's, it's still not mainstream. And believe me, when WSL2 with NVIDIA becomes mainstream, I, I'm all on that. I, I like the Windows operating system when it's not making things difficult for me. This line here is very, very important for when you're making this run on Windows. And we're gonna take you through all the steps to actually make this on run, run on Windows, and then we will actually see how to train and how to infer. So the code relies heavily on custom PyTorch extensions that are compiled on the fly with NVCC. And this is one thing that I found very interesting looking when I looked at the code inside of 
the original TensorFlows is they do two custom kernels, really, that they, I believe two, that they use to do real low level CUDA compatible stuff. And I learned a lot actually by reading the original style GANs. So that's why I'm particularly excited that now on the Windows version, it requires Microsoft Visual Studio. They recommend installing the Visual Studio Community Edition and adding it into the path. So this is highly, highly important. This is doing custom C compiling and Windows, unlike Linux, does not come with a free, awesome, powerful GCC compiler. So you've got to install a good C compiler, which is really for Windows is Visual Studio. So use the Community Edition. Let me show you that first step. I've already got it installed and it takes forever and a day, so I don't want to rip it out and just go through that long, long download process again. But let me launch it here. This is the Visual Studio installer. It's getting everything ready. It's already downloaded. If you take this through for the first time, I mean, this will be hours while it downloads this, unless you're internet speed is way faster than mine. Probably not hours, this was at least a half hour. So the thing that you want, it's showing you what I have installed. Okay, so apparently I have 2017 installed it as well. I probably don't even need that anymore, but 2019 is the one you'll want to be dealing with. And if I go to modify, yeah, this is what you'll see when you're installing this literally for the first time. A lot of these you won't need. You need the desktop development with C++. And I don't know, I think Microsoft feels that C++ is not really a happening language anymore, so they don't default this. So if you install this, you'll end up with .NET. And I do use .NET occasionally, not so much on this channel, but for other things that I'm, I'm doing. So I do install that. And then I install the universal Windows C++ platform. So these two, make sure that you install them. And then you would do install while downloading. That'll save you some time. And it goes through its whole rigmarole and it's done. So that's the first step. Make sure you get that. You'll download this VS Community Edition, this big long exe file. Get whatever is the latest. It seems to be pretty, pretty compatible with that. And then the thing that the NVIDIA researchers recommend doing, and you've got to do this, is add to your path. Now, don't add this to your path. Run this batch file. So if you open up an explorer, you can find this batch file here, and it's under this PC, program files, and then it's under Microsoft Visual Studio 2019 Community. Uh, VC, gosh, I can't remember now, uh, auxil auxiliary, build, and then this uh, VC vars, this batch file. But you would double click and run this. I've run it once, and so I'm not going to run it again, but it basically will launch a console and give you the output and tell you everything's cool. So that's just adding things to the appropriate paths. At this point, I would reboot because you've changed the paths, so in theory, Opening a new console window fixes that, but in Windows, paths tend to get cached in places I don't expect in terms of running applications, so reboot. Now, once you've got those in place, you're in good shape. The next thing you need to do is make sure you have Anaconda Python installed, either Anaconda or Minaconda. And I always get asked this, I prefer Minaconda. Minaconda just means that by default nothing is installed and you have to install all of your packages. Anaconda just throws the world at you. I often have to put these in microservices so I really need to know what needs to be installed and what doesn't need to be installed so I prefer the minimal. But get Anaconda, Minaconda, one of those two installed. I have videos on installing Anaconda in Minaconda. It's, it's a very straightforward process. In Windows, once you get it, you're going to get this prompt. It's called the Anaconda PowerShell prompt. And definitely use PowerShell on Windows. They're going to eventually, they being Microsoft, probably remove the old uh, CMD. So here you are. You notice we're in base. We're going to create an entirely new 
environment. So to do this, I'm going to do conda create minus minus name, and I'm going to call this stylegan PyTorch. Python equals 3.7 because that's what the researchers recommend. I mean, you could live on the wild side and try to make this 3.8, but let's keep things simple. And this is just an environment. This is not my main system, so I don't care. We'll say yes, install all of that. I'll fast forward through this. Okay, let's conda activate stylegan. PyTorch. Ah, oh, gosh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to fix that. PyOrch. And then we're going to go ahead and start to install this. So the first thing we need to install is PyTorch. And actually, before I install that, let's install one other thing. This might not exactly be necessary because they build a lot of this into into PyTorch, but the CUDA 11 toolkit or newer. I do like having that installed on my, on my computer directly. So just to show you how to install that, I mean, at the minimum, you need your latest NVIDIA driver on your computer. Install Windows. They've got this nice guide here from NVIDIA, but you honestly don't need to go through all the steps there. So this is CUDA 11.2 downloads. So we're going to do it for Windows, x86, Windows 10. I like using the EXE local. And then you download it, it's 2.9 gigabytes. And it's just an installer. It takes, you, it takes you right through the whole process. And then at that point, you have the latest version, CUDA 11, on your system. Reboot after that and you should be fine on that. You don't need QDNN or any of those things for PyTorch, or at least for this, this installation to work. So back to here. Now we're going to install the version of PyTorch that they're calling for, 171. So install PyTorch GPU. I love the way PyTorch does this. So here we go, scroll down to this, install PyTorch, PyTorch build, 171, that's, that's good enough. I care mostly about the first two, the first two digits. My operating system is Windows. I am going to choose to do a pip install for no particular reason. I did that previously and it worked out just fine. Language is going to be Python. And they let you pick the version of CUDA that it's compatible with. What a novel concept that gets dictated to you when you're doing TensorFlow. So we're going to choose 11. 11 is particularly important to me because I'm running an Ampere card. So that is essentially what I am going to get there. We're going to copy that entire line and we're and generate one yourself from here. Don't just copy mine. Okay, and we're in Stigan Pyorch. Spell it right. Don't spell like me. Guess what my worst subject in grammar school was? So let's go ahead and run this. This takes a moment for it to collect everything that it wants. I am going to go ahead and fast forward through this while it's doing all its things. It's going to probably ask me for a yes, no in a second, but I'll fast forward through that as well. All right, successful installation. So at this point, we have Stylecan PyTorch. The next thing that we need to do is install all of the needed packages from Stylecan. Now, I will tell you, they do not provide a requirements.txt file. Normally, you would, use, you would use that to tell you what to install. I'm going to show you basically my somewhat trial and error approach that I, I use towards doing this. So if you notice here, we, and I'm getting it slightly ahead of myself. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is now you need the code from the StyleGAN2 ADA PyTorch. So I'm going to click on code and you'll want to do the HTTPS clone of this. I'm going to do SSH mainly just because I'm recording this before it's actually available. 
So you use HTTPS, and then I'm just going to check this out to a temporary directory that I have. Okay, that I now have. And I'll do a get clone. It won't prompt you for a passphrase like this. And now we have this, so I can change into style again to ADA PyTorch, and there's everything. So the first thing that I'm going to need to run is the dataset utilities, dataset tool.py. So we're going to do Python data set under our tool. And the first thing it tells you is can't find module click. Easy enough. Install click. Pip install click. Done. Run it again. TQDM. Yeah, that's a good choice. And we install TQDM. That gives you all those nice progress complete bars. Run dataset tool again. Okay, now it's it's good to go. So what you need to do now is basically get your data set. Now I am going to do this with, I'm going to do this with my fish data set. So I basically ran Flickr, grabbed a bunch of fish pictures and created a GAN that is capable of creating fish. And it, it did really pretty good. I also curated it, I went through and human removed things that were like fish decorations, marble statues of fish that people had in there. So this directory that my fish are in, that is going to be the source. So I will do Python dataset tool minus minus source is going to be where they come from. And then minus minus dest is going to be just some other directory. This is where it's going to convert it. This used to be the TF records on the old TensorFlow version, this is where PyTorch is going to put them into a format that it likes, which is PNG files in specific directories. So for that, I'm going to do a directory on my own computer. I'm just going to call it fish temp because I'm not actually going to use this directory. I have, I already have one of these generated, but I'm just going to show you what it, what it looks like. And just so that we can see that. So there's the one that I generated. I'm just going to do new and fish temp. And it's going to fill that directory for me with the converted images. This is one place where as it zips through, if any of your images are non-standard, like grayscale or a different size, it's gonna bomb out. That's done. These two directories are essentially the same now, but if we go into fish, You'll see these number directories because it's, it's really not cool to throw 50,000 images or something crazy into a single directory. Dataset JSON, that mainly contains your labels, I think, in PyTorch. Uh, that doesn't matter so much here. There's probably other telemetry information in there. But if you go into them, this is what I like so much about this better than the TF records. Now, granted, these are PNG files, so this is lossless, so th this is big compared to JPEGs, but Oh, and by the way, I, I must not have curated every image out of here. That's not a real fish. Also, the cropping was unfortunate. This poor fish lost his lost the front of his face and his tail. But So now you've got this. Let's go ahead and train. I am going to go ahead and just copy this. So this is Python train py. That's the data source and that's the output directory. Now there's all kinds of other parameters that you can put in here too, if you wanna really customize. If you don't have as much GPU memory, you're gonna to wanna to customize this. You can scale back the number of GPUs that you can, you can use, all these kind of things. This computer has one fairly high-end GPU, so I'm not gonna configure any of that. And we're going to output the results to JTH results. So I'll show you that directory as it starts up. So let's go ahead and paste this and paste, there it is. So let's go ahead and run it. The training, ah, okay, we need to install a few more of these. So let's pip install requests, probably a few more, image IO I think is one, psutil, pip install psutil, run this one more time, pip install scipy. The people who installed anaconda instead of minaconda are laughing at me right now. Uh, scipy installed. Let's go ahead and, okay, it's off. 
So this, I've seen this many, many, many times. This is the startup. I can see their custom kernels got loaded. There's the structure of StyleGAN. It's running on one GPU. It's exporting the sample images. This part takes a while, depending on how many images you have. If you have like 50K, this, this really takes a while. Not, I mean like an hour or two. And then it's going to begin training. My GPU, I can, I can hear it already over there. I usually eliminate the noise from the, the images from the video as much as I can. So it's training for 25,000K images. Now, if you don't know what that means, this is basically how many images it is going to train for. This is your training length. 25K takes quite a while. Often like 3K or so is a good run just to see how far it's going. You can continue that. You can and do a transfer learning-esque thing where you start from previous images that you, start from previous networks that you've trained. This is no transfer learning. I am training this from random weights. So it is going to go through 25,000 of these cycles. Now the ADA is using augmentation, so really we have a near infinite data set because it's rotating images, it's doing all kinds of bizarre things. So we can have sort of as many images as we want. So even though I've got 5,000 or so images, it's going to go through 25,000 times 1,000 images in total that it's going to train this thing on. And this is the amount of augmentation. This will increase as it trains. And they give you the telemetry here. This is going to take 7.4 seconds a tick. And this is the amount of time that tick zero started. And it's evaluating the metrics. So this is where it gives you the FID, which is essentially the error metric for GANs. It's, it's kind of complicated. I, do, I could do a whole video just in FID, but it is... The lower, the better, basically. It starts out usually in the hundreds and gets gets down to in the 20s. Sometimes if you if you don't have a, as good of a data set and the, the better your data set is, you should be able to get this below 10, really the lower, the better, but you have to throw more and more training at it to get those lower fits. Look in the paper and you can see what NVIDIA was able to achieve in terms of FIDs. They get some pretty low ones. I don't remember the stats offhand. So let's look at these results. Here you can see these numbered folders that the utilities are created. And I think this is great. This is very much what you want to do for a research project like this because you're going to keep all your previous runs. This one here is the one that's currently running. So if you look in here, you can see they create these big giant PNG files. So this is where it's currently at. It's not really doing, I mean, this is essentially from random weights. And this will get better and better and better. And this is the initial fakes, which is not doing that good. The reels, these are from my training data, so that's really quite good. Let's look at one while it's, that has gone for much longer. So this is one that I let run overnight. And you can see that I got to that 2800, that is how many K images it's trained through. So you can see here, it's doing impressively good. I mean, that yellow guy there looks like a pretty legitimate fish. The thing that you're going to really want here are your pickle files. Those contain, is remember, in GANs, there's a discriminator and a generator. You're mostly interested in the generator, but the discriminator does have some uses that, that I'll probably show in, in future videos. But we would normally use the latest pickle file, and that lets you use the code that is up here. So they have a number of examples that they have here. You would run Python generate, you would specify an out directory, you specify the truncation, I'm not going to explain what that's for exactly, but that that's that gives you different results. The seeds are basically seeds that 
the generate, I think it's 512 numbers totally is in the vector that randomly generates it. So these, these are these vectors that you can slide between to create, it's the latent vector to create these transitions. Seeds though, I mean, dealing with a large vector is hard. So these are just seeds that let you generate that. And then this is the network that you're going to deal with. So if we wanted to generate one of these, I am going to take this, go to my notebook. We're going to run generator. The output directory, though, is going to be my C colon JDH. Windows is trying to help me there. That's cute, but it's in the way. It's going to basically be, I'm going to put it in my results directory. These are very temporary directories that we'll use a trunk of one. Those seeds are fine. Now, if I ran this with this, this would be the met faces, which I believe are paintings of faces. So we're going to replace this whole part with this. So that's where that was at. And then the name of the pickle file. And I can use any of these. It's just the earlier ones aren't trained as well. And that should get me some generation. So let's go ahead and go back to here. And this is just the tip of the iceberg as far as doing generation. You can do, I mean, often I take the code that NVIDIA had and I do my own generation because I want direct control of the latent vectors to be able to, to do various things. So let's go ahead and run this. This is pretty quick. Okay, it generated those. And there's my fish. These are from these various seeds. Alrighty, that's it. That is how to fully train and generate StyleGAN 2 ADA images with the newest PyTorch version from NVIDIA. This makes it so much easier. So let me know in the comments what you what you think. Are you interested in doing some more videos on maybe exploring the latent vector space? How to do really how to control and manipulate these these images and faces that it's generating? I've I've done some kind of informal research of that on my own, and I'm, I'm thinking of doing some videos there. So let me know what you would be interested. Would you also be interested in seeing this same process done in Linux? Because I have that set up as well, or some benchmarking with StyleGAN to ADA, because I've got a dual boot Linux machine. This, I can literally run the same hardware on Windows or in Ubuntu 20, so let me know. And if you found this interesting, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give the video a like. Thank you very much.